This is MAP 152. We are going to look at section 3.3. Uh, this is the first part tri of trig substitutions. We're just going to do one case this time. Next, next time we'll do uh, two other cases and see where those lead. So here's the idea. So doing this integral uh, with the techniques that we have so far would not be able for <laughs> We wouldn't be able to do it. So um, I'm going to show you technique, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, rationale, like why this works. So our substitution, notice that this is in the form a squared minus x squared. 25, we could think of this as 5 squared minus x squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a substitution. I'm going to let x equal 5 times sine of theta. So notice that a sine theta is my substitution that I make if it's in this form. So I recognize the form. I choose the substitution. Uh, next lecture, we'll talk about some other options. This lecture, we're just going to focus on this one. So what's going on here? Um, actually, let me finish this part first. So the derivative of that then would be 5 times cosine uh, d theta. And now when I substitute that in, I'm going to have 25 minus uh, x squared. So that would be 5 sine theta squared, that whole thing squared. And notice dx is 5 times cosine theta d theta. So there's just the substitution. And just to get a sense of what we're doing here, if I think about if I had a, a triangle, right triangle, and that is my theta, remember sine is opposite over adjacent. So notice if x equals 5 sine theta, you can also say that sine theta, this would be x over 5. Notice these sines, sides, would be in the ratios opposite over hypotenuse. And if we use Pythagorean theorem, this side down here then looks like 5 squared minus x squared, 25 minus x squared, which you notice that shows up there. Uh, so that's kind of that's kind of nice. So that's the uh, that's the idea that we're doing. Um, we do the substitution, we try and work it out, and then we're going to substitute back in to get our x values because we started in terms of x. So let's go from here. Nice little bit of manipulation that'll happen every time. 25 minus Notice 5 squared is 25, and then I have uh, sine squared theta, and that's still times like this. And I can factor a 25 out of these. So I get 25 times 1 minus sine squared. That's convenient, because we know what that is. I've still got this mess out here. And uh, the square root of 25 is 5, so this would be 5 square root 1 minus sine squared times 5 cosine theta d theta. Still shoving stuff together. 5 times 5 is 25. And we know that 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. So it's square root of cosine squared, which is just cosine. And that gives us cosine squared. So I'm going to move this up to here. So I'm going to say 25 integral cosine squared theta d theta. And now if we pull back to uh, previous chapters, we know that we can, we can figure, we can do this. We can do this integral using some of the techniques from before. So before I jump into that, the strategy now is to do this integral. And then once we get our answer, substitute things back in to get it in terms of x. So... If you want to fast forward a little bit and find uh, where the, I just get to the answer, you can do that. I'm just going to do this integral just to remind us. So cosine squared, as I think about that, um, I could rewrite that. So I'm going to peek at my lookup chart that I've been developing this whole time. There it is. And I know that cosine squared is this 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2. And right now, I'm just going to write it as uh, 1 half plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. And I can break this up into two integrals. And so then now, um, I could go to find this derivative of cosine of 2 theta. And I'll use a little u substitution for that. So I'll let this be that, 2 d theta. So this would be the integral of 
uh, I need a one half in there to take care of the two d theta cosine of u over two. So that's the integral pull out a one fourth of a cosine of u. And I know the integral of cosine is sine. So that becomes this. And that's this part. So I've got 25 times 1 fourth sine u. And then on this side, I've got 25. This is just going to be uh, 1 half of theta. Oh, and let me substitute that u back in. That's a 2 theta. It's a 2 theta. And I'm pretty good. I know what theta is. This sine 2 theta, I'm going to break that up because, again, what I want to do is substitute these values back in. I know what sine of theta is. I don't know what sine of 2 theta is. So I'm going to peek over here, see if I've got that relationship somewhere. Let me write down that relationship so I'm good to go. So I know I can break it up uh, this way, 2 sine x cos x. I have uh, 25 halves of theta plus 25 fourths. And then this becomes 2 sine theta cosine theta. And that's plus some constant. Now, whoa, what a ton of work, right? So notice, again, strategy. Here's the new thinking. Substitute this in. Here's last chapter thinking, which may still feel like new thinking, but we're not done because our original question was in terms of x. So we need to get everything in terms of x. So we know what, what sine theta is in terms of x. It's x over 5. So this is going to be an x over 5. Uh, this 2 will cancel out that 2, so I'm just going to treat this like it's a 25. Cosine of theta. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine is going to be this. Still plus that constant. And then theta, what is theta? Well, I know that sine of theta is x over 5. So theta must be arc sine of x over 5. So this is going to be 25 halves times arc sine of x over 5. And if I clean this up in here, 5 times 5 in the denominator is 25. That cancels that out. So I've got uh, 25, that turned into a 5 for some reason, halves arc sine of x over 5 plus x times the square root of x squared, uh, 25 minus x squared, plus c. Man, and notice how beautiful this is. This brings together so many pieces for us. Um, again, this is a skill that we've practiced. This is the new piece right here, the substitution. So let's go ahead and do another, uh, another example. So what I notice is this is in that form, that square root of a squared minus x squared. And in this case, a is 2, right, a squared. So here's my substitution. That means that the derivative of that is this. And what's about to happen happens every time. We substitute this in, uh, 4 minus x squared. If I square this, I get 4 sine squared theta over x, okay, that's 2 sine theta, dx. Notice dx is 2 times cosine theta times d theta. There's that. And then from here, I can factor that 4 out, and it's the square root of 4. So that becomes 2. Becomes this. Those 2s are gone. This is the square root of cosine squared. So this becomes cosine. So notice now I have the derivative of uh, 2, that's my 2, cosine squared over sine. Okay, and there's my substitution. So I've done this trig substitution. 
Uh, just for the record, I'm going to draw my triangle so I can refer back to it. There's my theta. If sine is x equals 2, opposite over hypotenuse, right? Because sine theta would be x over 2. So this Pythagorean theorem, 4 minus x squared, that shows up again. So there's my triangle. Okay, so here's my substitution. And now I have to pull on what I know uh, in order to solve to do that integral. So let's go ahead and dig into that. Cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. Um, these are both divided by sine. So I'm going to distribute that. So I'm going to think of this as 1 over sine minus sine squared over sine is sine. So I can split this into two integrals. 1 over sine. 1 over sine is cosecant. All right, and uh, that integral cosecant, I either know it or I look it up, whichever route I want to go. And integral of sine, that's negative cosine, so. Great, so now I have all those pieces. So now what I need to do is grab, lean on this triangle here to substitute back in to get my, to get my x values. So here's some things that I know. I know that sine of theta from my, my first evaluation is x over 2. It looks like I might not need it, but I do need it because cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. It's like sine flipped over. So if sine is x over 2, cosecant is 2 over x. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So let me, let me substitute these into here. Uh, cosecant, 2 over x minus cotangent adjacent over opposite cosine adjacent over hypotenuse these twos will divide out so i'm basically left with that and there it is so let's go ahead and dig into this uh, last example now, now this particular one, we could two do, do two different ways. Uh, you don't always have to use trig substitution, but I'm going to show I'm going to show both ways. So looking at this, it's in that form a squared minus x squared, where a is one. So the substitution I'm going to do here is uh, x equals a is one, so sine theta. If I think about the rectangle for that, I'm sorry, the triangle for that, if theta is here, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that'd be x over 1. And so notice Pythagorean theorem gives me square root of 1 minus x squared here, which shows up here. Okay, and if x is sine theta, dx is cosine theta, d theta. So let's substitute these in. So I'm going to have the integral, x is cubed, so sine cubed, square root of 1 minus x is squared, sine squared. And then dx, notice that dx is cosine theta d theta. This is the piece right here where people, if people make a mistake in the substitution, they forget to throw this part in. All right, let's keep going from here. So now I have sine cubed theta. I know that this, this one minus sine squared is cosine squared. So this is the same as square root of cosine squared, which is just cosine. Then I've got that cosine. So this is going to be sine cubed cosine squared so there's my substitution and then now i'm pulling on my skills from previous chapters about doing some of these um, these trig integrals so i notice i have a sine cubed i'm going to split this out to make give me a single sign so i can do a u substitution where u is cosine so i'm going to think of this as sine squared times sine, right? And these are all multiplied together, so I'm just going to switch these two. And then I want to do a u substitution with cosine, so I'm going to write this one in terms of cosine. I know sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Again, you can look that up on that cheat sheet that you've been developing for yourself. I'm sorry, that reference sheet that you've been de developing for yourself. And at this point, you can distribute that cosine squared into there if you want. Uh, 
or you could just do your u substitution now. I'm going to let u equal cosine. d is a negative sine of theta d theta. Great. So the negative is going to come in here. I'm just going to throw it out front. Sine theta d theta is du. This would be 1 minus u squared times u squared. Substitute that into there. And I can distribute that into there. I might as well distribute that negative into there as well. So notice that this u squared becomes negative. So I'm going to say minus u squared. This u to the fourth becomes positive. So u to the fourth minus u squared du. And that's one that I can thoroughly enjoy uh, doing. One fifth u to the fifth plus one third, uh, sorry, minus one third u cubed. And remember that's plus a constant. And I'm not done yet because I know that cosine is u. So I have one fifth cosine to the fifth minus one third cosine cubed. And again, I'm not done yet because I want it in terms of x. So I've got to undo this cosine substitution, uh, this sine substitution that I made. And so if this is my triangle, cosine, since cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, it's going to be this over 1, so it's just square root minus x squared, which is a 1 half power, right? This is that. That'll make it easier for me to plug it in, I think. So I have 1 fifth um, cosine of theta to the fifth power. So this to the fifth power, which is 1 minus x squared to the 5 halves, minus 1 third cosine to the third, this thing to the third power. So 1 minus x squared, 3 times a half is 3 halves, plus c. There it is. And that wasn't, you know, that wasn't too, too painful. Um, it, you know, if you're feeling pretty good and you just want to go on with the trig substitution here, uh, go for it. I just want to show you, like, another way we could have done this without using the trig substitution. Too. We could have done a kind of a tricky u substitution to get there. And what we'll do is we'll let u equal the thing that's being square rooted, 1 minus x squared. And so notice we could manipulate that to also say that x squared equals 1 minus uh, u, sorry. Right, add x squared to both sides, subtract u from both sides. So we've got this. And we also know then that uh, the derivative of u would be negative 2x dx. And I don't have an x dx, but I do have an x cubed, which I could break into an x squared and an x. So before I do the substitution, I'm going to rewrite this as x squared, square root of 1 minus x squared, x dx. Notice I just took that x cubed, and I split it up into x squared times x. So if du equals this, that means that negative 1 half du equals x dx. So I'm going to substitute do my substitutions i know that x squared is uh is one minus u so this is one minus u square root one minus x squared is u u x dx boom is negative one half du so i'm going to throw that negative one half out front throw my du there and i can distribute that u into there and notice what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm thinking of square root of u as u to the one half power, so into here, and then times um, times u to the first, so u to the three halves power. Okay, I can do my integrals from there. And I'm, if I distribute this negative one half into here, these two's cancel here, so this becomes negative one third u to the three halves plus a negative times a negative, these two's cancel, one-fifth u to the five-halves. Notice I've got all these same pieces here. And since u is one minus x squared, I can take that and plug it in, and I get negative one-third, one minus x squared, don't forget your plus c, I get the same thing. So, uh, I mean, it's kind of up to you which 
which method is less painful. Uh, either one would be a good way to go. But again, the practice that we're doing right now are these trig substitutions. And um, these, we've only been doing it for a certain case, right? Our case here has been a squared minus x squared. Look at that. Um, next lecture, we'll focus on some other cases. Send me any questions that you have, message me, or post them in the forum.